Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Friday Football Frenzy on a Saturday morning. I'm Stan Pamphilis, along with Luke Notstein. And Luke, we're in double digits. We're in week 10 of the prep football season. Wow. Flying by, but it also means the games are getting more important. Yeah, it seems like we just started, but we're already at week 10. Week 10. Unbelievable. One of the biggest games last night, Stan, in yeah. Weaverville, undefeated Irwin. 8-0, visiting North Buncombe, who entered 7-1. Both teams perfect in conference play. Warriors lost 20 seniors from last year. North Buncombe has struggled the past few years, but now they're battling for first place. A full house at North Buncombe last night. Let's pick it up in the first quarter. Irwin's Damian Ferguson airing it out for Chase Austin. Look at this throw, and Austin makes a difficult catch with a defender all over him. Big first down for the Warriors. Later in the drive, Damian Ferguson takes the snap, goes up the middle, crosses the goal line for the touchdown, and Irwin takes the quick lead of 7-0. But the Warriors were just getting started last night. Second quarter, Warriors in the red zone, and Ferguson follows his blockers 10 yards across the goal line to double the lead. It's now 14-0. Just a few minutes later, more from Ir Irwin as Ferguson looks downfield wow. for his favorite target last night. Chase Austin, who makes the catch, picks up 30 more yards. Later in the drive, Ferguson looks to the near sideline and connects with Chavis Williams, who shows off his speed yards after the catch inside the 15-yard line, and that'll set up Another pass play from Ferguson, this time to a wide open Jeremiah Jackson to make it 21 to zero. Irwin goes on to beat North Buncombe last night, 45 to 14. Crazy game in Black Mountain. The lights went off three different times in this game wow. between Hendersonville and Owen. No short of an electricity on the field though. Watch this second quarter, Bearcats trail 22 14, but Mike Schmidt fires to Michael Cook who just won't go down 22 21 Owen. The problem with scoring against Owen, you have to kick off to you know who, Jagger Gardner. He gets a little wedge here, gets a block, and I mean nobody touches this kid. He goes all the way. He's got to be in the Shrine Bowl, is not, but he still excites us. Touchdown, <laughs> 93 yards, 28-21 Owen. Still second, Owen up 37-21. Here it comes. Schmidt again looking for Cook, and you've got to be what kidding me. I mean, wide open, 77 yards, 37-27 Owen. But Jagger Gardner has the package, man. He's complete. Just too tough. He breaks tackles, breaks one there, breaks another there, and then sprints into the end zone. What a game. Three power outages. <laughs> Owen wins 57-54 next week. Another huge one for them on the road at Polk County. It will decide the league title. What a game. Now back to the MAC. The other first place team, Asheville, visiting Robertson. Third quarter, Cougars on top, 42 to nothing. Tevin Salters handing off to Reggie Battle, who absorbs the contact and picks up a first down. Later in the drive, more yardage for the Cougars. Move the chains again with a tough run to the outside. Man, what a big hit there. That sets up DeAndre Gaskin, who goes up the middle and just stretches the football across the goal line for the touchdown. Asheville up 49-0. Robertson looking to get some offense going later in the game. Darian Payne connects with Chris Barnwell, who makes the catch and gets out of bounds right there. That'll set up this. Seth Coleman gets the rock and pushes his way through the end zone. For the first score of the game for the Rams, it would not be nearly enough for the home team. Asheville beats Robertson 49-7. The Cougars will host North Buncombe next week. Last home game for the seniors at McDowell, and it's a tough task against the Reynolds Rockets. First possession for Reynolds sets the tone for the night. Picture perfect draw play to Rico Daddle. Cuts one way, cuts another way, slips a tackle, and he'll just outrun everybody into the end zone. That's a touchdown, 7-0. Still in the first quarter, though, McDowell battles back inside the 10. Looking for the tie, Casey Ray to Austin Hollyfield. Out of the backfield, he scores. We're tied at seven. Later, the Rockets begin to blast off, literally. Watch this pass. <laughs> Tevin Stafford to Stone Finsloff. Nice toss and what a grab over mm. the middle. 15 to seven, Reynolds. No shortage of push-ups for the Rocket cheerleaders tonight. Oh, man. They had to be tired. Still in the first <laughs> quarter, it's Stafford to Finsloff again. Another nice catch. Reynolds rolled by McDowell. 72 to 41. Wow, a lot of offense last night. One of the area's top teams, Franklin Panthers, unbeaten fifth in the state. They had their homecoming last night. Also, their Hall of Fame induction ceremony as they were getting ready to play East Henderson. Time to celebrate the Panthers' past as the Franklin High Hall of Fame induction took place. The 1991 state championship cross country team. Shrine Bowl player and hoops and baseball star, the late Ron Higdon, and Citadel football coach and former Panther football star Mike Houston inducted his Bulldogs play at Western Saturday. He also was formerly a coach at Robertson and recently at Lenore Ryan. He led the Bears to the national title game in Division II, and this ranks right up there for him. He's so happy.
experience here uh, being back with my family and uh, friends and teachers and coaches and uh, many people that really helped me along in my life. All right, now let's go to the game where Franklin, boy, here's a guy that's going to be in their Hall of Fame, Jeremiah Young. He uh, broke the career rushing record last night, and he is a bruiser. I mean, that guy scores. That made it 7 nothing as uh, Franklin took the early lead over East Henderson. Then he gets it again and just goes over the other side and bangs in there. There's another Shrine Bowl guy should have been in. And then after that, Franklin decides to give somebody else a chance. <laughs> they give it to Kelton Lowry, and he shows the same kind of skills, but a little bit more speed there on the outside. Touchdown. They made it 24 zip. Franklin wins 44-7. They're 9-0. All right, let's go to Tuscola, where the Mountaineers hosted West Henderson last night. Third quarter, Tuscola up 14-10. Parker Allen heaving the ball into the sky, tipped by the defender. Damon McDaniel stays with it, makes the catch, and then would not go down. Wow. Inside the five-yard line, huge play. Later in the drive, Parker Allen gets the call from his coach. And it just keeps the ball himself right up the middle for a touchdown as Tuscola increases their lead to 21 to 10. Later in the game, West Henderson moving the football. William Crouch to Taylor Geyer across the middle. Tough first down. And that'll set up Brendan Goings, who dives across the goal line for the touchdown to make it 21 to 17. Goings would score a few minutes later to put the Falcons up 23 21. Late in the fourth, Parker Allen to Caleb Ferguson, who appears to go all the way to Pater after the catch. But the referees call it an incomplete pass. Watch it again. We slow it down for oh. you. It appears that Ferguson made the catch. West Henderson holds on to beat Tuscola. That was a fourth down play. Your final score last night 23 to 21. All right, at Pisgah, the Bears playing host to North Henderson Friday night. Let's go to the first quarter. Knights quarterback Trevor Kraft to Darren Lamons, who makes the wow. catch. Ooh, takes a shot there down the middle of the field. That leads to a field goal attempt from Lamons, and it splits the uprights. North Henderson on top 3-0. All right, later in the game, Pisgah quarterback Lucas Hall getting things going. Trey Morgan makes the catch across the middle. For a big first down. Couple of plays after that, Lucas Hall showing off his athletic ability, rolling towards the near sideline and finds Jesse Martinez, fancy feet, wow. to pick up more yardage. And then later in the game, Hall drops pack and fires a perfect strike to Trey Morgan, one of his favorite targets last night for the touchdown. Pisgah beats North Henderson 35 to 10. All right, now we're going to wrap things up with a recap of our Friday night rivals game, Belton Honey a Path at Wren. Jason Patterson and Tom Van Noy give us the lowdown. The battle for Region 3A's title brought us to Wren High School. And the fans were certainly ready to roll in time. That's because Kelly Bryant was here. Uh, it started early third play of the game, 56 yards. Once he gets down the sideline, the long strides for the touchdown. Makes his presence known a second time. There we go again, and he was able to take that in from short yardage, short drive after a turnover. The Wren defense just as solid. Spencer Owens Hunter had a couple of picks on the night. Yeah, he almost went the distance, didn't he, there? But then a query was Nathaniel Aquari able to take it to the distance for a touchdown. Big second half of that young man. Number 21 took the game over, led Wren to 50 points and a region title in 2014 with a win over BHP. All right, other scores from week 10. A wild one in Bakersville as Mitchell rallies to edge Mountain Heritage. Swain shuts out Andrews and Asheville school rules by Providence Athletic Club. Christ School gets a shutout on the road. They get a victory over Hickory Grove Christian. Brosman wins big, 46-22 over Cherokee. And Avery shutting out Madison. RS Central crushes East Burke. Kings Mountain beats up on Chase. And Robbinsville moves to 9-0 with an easy win at Hayesville.